This video is by Straight Goods News, sgnews.ca. After weeks of hype about major changes to his cabinet and pushing the reset button on government, Stephen Harper has instead gone back to the same old approach. But we aren't fooled. Altering titles of ministries isn't the same as actually changing the direction. Stephen Harper had a golden opportunity, opportunity here to change, but nothing that we saw today shows that the Prime Minister was ready to change direction. Instead, he decided to double down on the same approach that saw his government beset by ethical scandals and lurching from crisis to crisis. This is a desperate attempt to pretend to put a fresh face on his government from a Prime Minister who is simply not willing to change. This cabinet has the same government house leader, has the same ministers at Finance, Treasury Board, and Foreign Affairs. This cabinet ties the record again for the largest cabinet in Canadian history, and they've increased representation of women from 11 to 12. This is not a new direction. I suppose that it's not really a surprise that someone with Stephen Harper's well-earned reputation for stubbornly ignoring scientists and evidence and for rejecting practical out-of-hand proposals from opposition and for putting partisanship first, well, now he wants to try and convince Canadians that adding perennial conservative attack dog Pierre Polyev to cabinet, that that cons constitutes putting a fresh face on his government. Jim Flaherty and Stephen Harper have presided over record deficits, time and time again, showing an unbalanced approach. They ignore evidence and they continue to make their priority things like huge corporate tax giveaways to profitable oil and gas companies and banks while they cut EI and vital services to Canadians. Jim Flaherty is still at finance despite his problems managing this portfolio. Peter Van Loan is still the government house leader despite his hyper-partisan approach. And overseeing the largest meat recall in Canadian history, well, Jerry Ritz was left in charge of food safety. And Tony Clement is still the president of the Treasury Board despite losing track of $3.1 billion in security spending and failing to act in the face of privacy breaches affecting over a million Canadians. Yet, Conservatives are now trying to claim that adding a face like Pierre Polyev, a regular PMO attack dog, and bringing John Duncan, who resigned in an ethics scandal, that bringing these people to cabinet constitutes adding fresh faces. Well, no one really believes that Pierre Polyev is the answer to conservative ethics scandals or solving the country's democratic deficit. I think that the conservative approach can be summed up in seven words putting partisanship ahead of sound public policy. Conservatives have time and time again refused to work with others. They have ignored scientists and other experts, and they have rejected proposals from the opposition. This is a government in crisis that is now refusing to face the facts. And the fact is that the Conservatives are a tired and scandal-ridden government. The NDP understands that Canadians want a government committed to transparency instead of secrecy, that embraces good governance instead of mismanagement, and that puts Canadians first instead of just conservative, narrow partisan interests. In contrast, we will continue to show Canadians that the NDP is the party that can be trusted to bring real change. I think if you look at the fact that the Prime Minister himself yesterday uh, tweeted that the most important thing right now is the economy. So if we look at the economic portfolios, it's the same people. He talked about fresh faces, there was all this hype about more women in, in different portfolios, and those portfolios are exactly the same. So if the Prime Minister was actually trying to uh, not just create this pretend fresh face, if he actually thought, you know what, this is time for a new direction, those key portfolios would be, would be moved around. I think uh, if you look at some of the quote-unquote up-and-comers in his caucus, they've been put into pretty junior portfolios, it doesn't signal to me any real change in direction. And just to, so just to follow up on what, uh, if there's no change in direction, then when he says there's going to be a throne speech in the fall, do you expect then anything different? Is it just good? I mean, do you expect any messaging to change between now mm. and then? Well, 
you're right to point out the throne speeches where uh, the government would set its new policy for the, the following two years. Uh, I remain hopeful that we'll actually see something, but if the, the cabinet shuffle is any indication, uh, a lot of that hope that I had is actually gone. I mean, when you do have a prime minister that takes this opportunity, really a, a golden opportunity, to send a pretty clear message through actions, not just through talking points, uh, and, he, and he lost that opportunity. So is this setting the stage for uh, for the throne, throne speech? Probably. Will the throne speech be as underwhelming as this cabinet shuffle? I can only imagine. I, I'll continue to hope for something different, but this Do doesn't go well. you have a new environment minister? Um, uh, I've never once heard uh, Leona Aglukak say the words climate change in the House or elsewhere, despite the fact that she represents a northern community where uh, climate change is really there on the doorstep. It's happening. Uh, so what will she do with the portfolio? She is the chair of the Arctic Council. Um, the Arctic Council recognizes as a global community that climate change is an Arctic issue. Uh, I think that uh, this minister really do, does need to um, listen listen to the guidance coming from the other countries because it's other Arctic countries that are saying this is something we need to tackle. Um, but, you know, she doesn't really have a track record as uh, as being a, an advocate when it comes to a lot to with Michelle Rempel. Um, her predecessor in Western economic diversification didn't really, we never really saw her. So what do you think seeing a strong performer in the House getting a portfolio that... Uh, isn't necessarily one of the higher profile ones after, especially after we've been hearing so much about women going into cabinet in this shuffle. I think uh, someone like Michelle Rempel has been touted um, uh, pretty widely as an up-and-comer, as a rising star, and uh, I think it's unfortunate that she would be put into a portfolio, a junior portfolio. Um, uh, you know, certainly there was a lot of speculation that she would be put into something a little more senior. Uh, but again, this goes back to uh, my thoughts about the shuffle generally, that this isn't actually putting a fresh face on anything. Uh, the, the key players, and the Prime Minister himself has said these are the key portfolios, the key players players are all the same. This isn't a change whatsoever. Uh, when trying to paint a fresh face means putting Pierre Polyev at the front and center in a cabinet portfolio. I mean, Pierre Polyev is the, the guy who stood up in the House and, and called Nigel Wright's actions honorable. This is the guy that stands up in the House and he is a conservative attack dog over and over, spouting the Prime Minister's office's talking points. What it says to me is, that's how you get ahead in this cabinet. If, if you're in this caucus and you actually want to get ahead, that's what you do. You get up there and you spout the talking points because that's what's being rewarded. That behavior is being rewarded versus uh, smarts and handling delicate portfolios. We're in new times. Um, I don't, it's, uh, it's not the way things have uh, traditionally been done, but maybe this is the, the future. I'm, I'm not sure. Jordan Press. I'll just ask fairly quickly. Uh, the one, uh, obviously, the one thing that the one person we won't see in, in cabinet apparently is going to be a senator. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm guessing, I don't know. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. But you know, the government has basically said we will not have the government leader in the in the Senate be a member of cabinet. Um, I know the NDP position on the Senate, but maybe to get your thoughts on having no senator, no member of the upper chamber, actually in cabinet. I think. Um <laughs> it's too little too late. Uh, you know, the, the Prime Minister Harper's trying to distance himself from the Senate as much as he possibly can, so it's uh, a good strategic PR move, but it's nothing more. I mean, this is the same Prime Minister who a appointed a non-elected, a, a non-parliamentarian non to cabinet. I mean, he doesn't care about these rules. He doesn't respect these rules. This is just a PR move and nothing more.